In top level football, teams need approximately six seconds to organize after winning the ball. Counter pressing is the concept to use this time frame of this organization of the opposition to quickly regain possession. As six seconds is not a huge amount of time, Gagan pressing affords quick and intense runs. Furthermore, taking a look at the teams that use counter pressing, it is clear that all sides like to be in possession. Confidence to possess the ball and play a constructive style of football is the foundation of counter pressing. Hello people and welcome to How To Perfect, a Gagan Press in Football Manager 2022 like Jurgen Klopp. So in this video, we are going to be talking about the principles of Gagan Pressing, how Jurgen Klopp utilizes that in his 4-3-3, but also we've created another tactic as an example of how to perfect Gagan Press in Football Manager 2022. Now, I've done a couple Klopp tactics this year, so this isn't purely focused on the club tactical analysis if you know what i mean we are really really focusing on how to perfect a gag and press in football manager hoping you guys can perfect a gag and press in your tactic as well so in this video we are going to be analyzing the gag and press of course looking at the football manager tactic we're going to look at the results as well with the tactic that we created in football manager but also we are going to be playing the game to see well that great gag and press play out so stay tuned strap in and let's go So as we've been doing recently, we will be using this article, how to practice gag and pressing. And we're going to be taking the principles of gag and pressing from this article and implementing that into Football Manager. Now, this article, again, a fantastic article. You will find it on TotalFootballAnalysis.com and the link of course will be in the description but looking at the principles of gag and pressing as in the last article which we didn't read we are going to create principles for the players to follow therefore we establish instructions out of most important aspects that influence our counter pressing to begin with a basic rule of defending is to minimize the space therefore maximizing pressure this is why one should make sure that the players bravely move towards the ball when transitioning from attack to defense so number one protect our goal by moving towards the ball to keep it as far away as possible as one needs a compact shape to decrease space to a minimum short distances between players are necessary a gag and pressing situation should always be prepared during the possession phase to provoke situations where the players do not need much time to get in a compact shape it is useful to keep passes short the space where the ball is is always the tightest area of the pitch these assumptions lead to our second principle play rather short passes than long passes to keep the distance to the ball short since in football the time between possession and being dispossessed can be really short it is necessary to prepare for a possible loss of the ball during a possession phase especially defenders should ensure a good rest defense clarifying responsibilities can save a crucial amount of time whenever the team loses the ball as the opponent plays with one striker for an example one center back can mark him the other can cover and the holding midfielder can move forward into the midfield to press the ball so now number three look for possible threats in in case of a loss of the ball when we are in possession last but not least the positioning of the players is important as well to keep possession one needs to create width and depth whereas your players should always provide as much as depth as possible the creation of only as much width as needed can be helpful to stay close to the ball in case of a loss one can press in an even smaller amount of time that means the players should position themselves slightly wider than the opponent to still stretch the opposition apart so for hashtag number four provide as much width as needed to retain possession so now for the conclusion besides the tactical aspects gig and pressing needs confident players therefore one should practice counter pressing regularly in sessions if you do so you will quickly notice progress in the speed of execution of your players so this article of course is more focused in real life more focused for coaches who are practicing gig and pressing for their teams but similarly in football manager the more the more the more you keep tweaking the more you play with it then the closer you will get to maximize a very very effective gag and press so that there is the principles of gag and press and now we can move over to the next part of this video So now we're going to be looking at how Jurgen Klopp uses his counter pressing or gag and press inside his 
inside his tactic well <laughs> in his well in his tactic so when this article was written i believe it was the 34th premier league game yes it was so this season with matip and especially van dyke back fit and firing liverpool have kept 21 clean sheets 21 clean sheets in 34 premier league games so far conceding only 22 goals so this article is looking at the key factors behind liverpool's impressive defensive record so we're not necessarily looking at the tactic as a whole we're mainly looking at their defensive system now of course they press and they like to counter press and liverpool currently lead the league this season in pressures in the attacking third so if we look at this little picture here we can see liverpool are leading the pressures in the attacking third with 1468 i believe brighton are actually leveling or equaling and we can go to the website to kind of get a updated reference so if we go to f ref so now we're on the website ourselves you can go to it yourselves as well fbref.com looking at the tackles in the attacking third you can see liverpool are very very high in the premier league brighton surprisingly are top with 119 and liverpool are there with 115 now if you add a little bit more context to this you could say that brighton may need to have attempted more tackles as they could have been defended more compared to liverpool but looking at the pressures in the attacking third i mean this this is a huge difference from game 34 to game 38 it's clear that liverpool kind of upped it in those last four games but they are now on 1702 attacking pressures well pressures in the attacking third and now when you combine the tackles and interceptions liverpool actually drop to the fourth lowest in the league and that is then because they are one of the better teams in the league and more of the time they will have the ball so it's less likely they will be making tackles and interceptions during the night minutes compared to a team like Everton and Watford in the Premier League. So during their 4-0 win against Manchester United in April, Liverpool's fourth goal was created from a pressing situation. Maguire plays a poor pass to young Hannibal Medjury on the right and the latter takes a heavy touch. The Liverpool players directly jump and close all the passing lanes and options for Hannibal. Robertson ends up nicking the ball and plays the ball into Yota's path. Yota controls the ball, turns and runs towards the goal. Salah is already on his bike. Diego Jota glides it through the United's defence for the Egyptian to dink the ball over De Gea and into the net. We have heard Klopp repeat time and time again that Liverpool defend yes liverpool defend to attack Klopp has also implemented a higher press in the aim of maintaining pressure against opposition who favor a short build-up play from the back the team is generally divided into two blocks the front three who are responsible to defend five or sometimes six players and in the second block is the block of seven of midfield and defense whose job is to close down the center and be ready to jump on the front four but liverpool and the Jurgen club also operate with a very high line it's become very rare to watch a Liverpool game these days without at least one mention of their high line whether for praise or scrutiny it is a tactic that has served the team well over the past few years Liverpool's high defense line is dependent on their pressing and their high energy in midfield it is all connected one unit from the striker to the goalkeeper now we can look at the chart here as well versus Liverpool they do have the most offside count so basically liverpool have caught the opposition offside 140 times and we can kind of get an update on that right now as well so we can look at the misky laner stats here and now you would have to switch it to the opposition stats look at the offsides and here we are 144 so within those four games they've caught the opposition offside four more times the image here is from the league game at the etihad where the ball comes out to kyle walker on the halfway line after a city free kick the liverpool players push up immediately leaving all Man City players five in an offside position as Walker crosses the ball to the left wing. Here, Leeds have the ball and have escaped Liverpool's press. Liverpool's defenders are making their way back from the halfway line to keep up with the Leeds attackers. As soon as Firpo plays the ball in behind, Matip and Van Dijk completely stop in their tracks for a split second, catching the attacker in an offside position. Of course, to be able to do this, you need to have some very, very good players. And that also applies in 
football manager as well. You're not just going to get away with playing a very, very high defensive line without, well, having great defenders, but also some great midfielders to be able to stop the momentum of the opposition. And, and in real life, there is a Virgil van Dijk effect. Now, you guys can actually read this article in your own time. We're not going to read about Virgil van Dijk because this article or this video is actually about Gegen pressing and Liverpool's Gegen pressing and implementing that in Football Manager 2022. But you can see the shape before Van Dijk arrives. So Liverpool in 1718, this is kind of the average shape that they will try and implement in a game. And now in this season with Van Dijk and obviously their new signings like Thiago and Diego Jota, this is more of the shape that Liverpool or that we see from Liverpool during this season. So conclusion, attacks wins you matches, defense wins you titles. Fortunately for Liverpool, they excel in both departments. In Klopp's side, one depends on the other. They are intertwined. Liverpool are the highest scoring team in the league that might be second now as the games have finished <laughs> with 86 goals and have only conceded one more than the league's best Man City 22 to 21. They have only failed to score in one game and have kept the most clean sheets 20 one and of course as you can see here as well the key players van dyke trent joe matip and robertson playing a lot of minutes for liverpool ibrahima konate he is very very promising and we are looking forward to seeing him next season he's more likely to play a lot more games next season and that there wraps up the jurgen klopp analysis but also the gegen press analysis as well i almost said the gegen klopp analysis <laughs> we also wrapped up the gegen press analysis now it's time to move over into football manager to have a look at our Club 433 from reading this article but also we have tweaked our old Club 433 but also I have a different tactic as well a diamond again showing you guys how you can implement a perfect gag and pressing system in Football Manager so now let's head over into Football Manager So what I'm going to do now actually is go into a couple games where we can see so against Chelsea 7-0 if I go to analytical data go to Liverpool and look at now the possession the possession gained you can see that we do gain possession fairly fairly high again this is looking like we are pressing high effectively as well not necessarily just getting pressing not necessarily just a counter pressing getting possession or winning possession six seconds after losing the ball but also the press in general rule from high was fairly impressive. So not necessarily that highlight. <laughs> So here's Chalabar, we win the ball here, Firmino, it's that like every time we lose the ball, we win the ball back fairly, fairly quickly as well. So here is Curtis Jones as well, getting possession, he loses the ball here, but look at him, right after, look at him again, he goes again, he goes twice, and that there is very, very impressive. So originally Van Dyke gets the ball, Van Dyke, Van Dyke gets the ball, let me slow down the tempo or the pace of this, he plays it into Curtis Jones, he loses the ball to Mount. Havertz collects the ball, but Jones does not give up. Let's count the time from when he loses the ball the first time. So he loses the ball around 4 minutes, 29 seconds. Literally, he wins the ball back 3 seconds later. Very impressive. After, after that little incident as well, again, he wins the ball back 3 seconds after that as well. Or even 2 seconds, plays it into Mane, and then that sets us off on our attack. And that is what we're kind of looking for, a very, very effective press when we lose the ball. Now, in that little highlight as well, you did see how narrow we was. Van Dijk found uh, Curtis Jones. It, he didn't have to play a very long pass at all. It was a short pass. And because that pass was short, once we did lose the ball, we already had bodies. Now, even though Curtis Jones was the only one that pressed at that time, we did have the left winger there already positioned in a very, very close um, place as well. That didn't even make sense, but you guys know what I meant. <laughs> So here's Mo Salah looking to win the ball, plays it to Hudson Odoi, he wins the ball there, look at him, and he just plays, look how quick and simple that transition there was, ah, oh, can we get that back? 
Just look how quick and simple this transition is. So already we've got a, I would say a defensive overload, possibly a three versus two here. It could be a three versus three if you're counting Kante. I'm not counting Kante, let's just cheat. We're not counting him. We're just gonna call this a three versus two. But the ball does go to Kante, so it was a three versus three. But Salah wins the ball back and look how close our players are to their three. It isn't literally a three versus three, but it's a very tight one. And you can see our players outside as well. So if the ball does leave this little area here, we do have Fabinho there to pick the ball up and we also have Gomez to pick the ball up as well Salah wins the ball plays it to Firmino but again we stay in close proximity that is very very uh, important when we are in possession he plays a quick one two and look at that already inside the box and on an attack and look, this little area here we won possession a lot here it actually might all be the same clip so Lukaku to Aspilicueta, Salah chasing back. There's Firmino again in close proximity to one another. Firmino gets the ball, plays it to Salah and we lose the ball, but the highlight stops, which is very, very annoying. Jordan Henderson here with Trent, plays the, we play the ball forward and look at Salah going. Puts pressure on the goalkeeper, forces him into a long pass and Henderson just collects the ball, sweeps it up, plays it to Firmino. But once we're in possession, it's look, we have to stay in close, um, close proximity. So if I just rewind a little bit, like, look how many plays we've got here in this little section here. So we're not even counting Salah here and it's positional rotations. Now look where Firmino is and look where Salah is. Salah is where normally Firmino would be and Firmino is of course where Salah typically would be. Now editing this video, this is actually towards the end of results. Now I actually might edit this and put this at the beginning before the tactics bit because I feel this part is very very vital and I don't want people to skip past this part because this is how gig pressing is working in the match engine if we play the game it's not all the time we, um, we see this so I done a possessional play video and someone said that they wanted to see the possessional um, they wanted to see goals using the positional play sorry and if you actually see in real life a lot of the goals aren't necessarily scored after or directly after positional play positional play kind of sets up the chances so positional play can set up i don't know a free kick opportunity a corner opportunity it could set up a lot of things so it's not necessarily direct play it's not necessarily you building through the half spaces and you go and score directly through that half space it of it obviously leads to other opportunities as well and it's similar to the gegging press once you win the ball it's not just about the pressing it's also in possession it's intertwined in possession and out of possession they are both as important so you can see here, look at us, we've got a lot of players in close proximity. If we do lose the ball, we have no worries about how effective our press can be because we've got a lot of players in and around that area. So here's Mane with the ball, Shaloba wins it, Mount and look, instantly pressing um, by Jones there and he forces that long ball from Mason Mount. So Mane in the wider area, he plays the ball into the box, Shaloba gets it out, Mount is there and Jones straight away pounces on Mason Mount to try and win that ball back. And bear in mind, this is with much more often press as well. So the pressing trigger is not all the way full to the max. It doesn't need to be in order to have an effective Gegen press. And he just forces the ball long just kicks the ball long and we do recover the ball with joe gomez who plays it to trend and there we are keeping the ball in close proximity so if we do lose the ball we can press effectively but do we lose the ball in this situation no we do not well we may do the game's just playing here whips it in and they're on the break now and instantly look at Trent instant pressing from Trent come on boys plays it to Gomez and look at us in close proximity that is effective Gagan press it's not just about winning the ball it's about how you are set up after winning the ball as well to basically have an effective Gagan press now effective is a key word because you can just technically class anything as a Gagan press I think that's what most people do it's like trigger press all the way up Standard line of engagement all the way up, everything all the way up. It's Gagan Press. That's what people just do. So I do want to call this Gagan Press, but I also want to call it an effective one as well. So as we did win this game 7 0, we can actually look at some, we'll say some of the goals, and hopefully some of them were a result of a well counter pressing situation. But this one is a corner. We whip it in Robertson. Plays that's probably why um Robertson's got a lot of key passes actually. It seems like he's taking corners for some odd reason. Plays it to Jones. Jones then does something, whips it, plays it to Marnie. 
It falls to Salah and it goes into the goal. Oh, I just realised it's not going to go to the next goal by itself. The second goal was a penalty, so we will skip that. This one looks like it starts from a throw, so we will look at this little build-up here. Plays it to Henderson. Kante wins the ball and we press immediately and Trent wins the ball, brings it forward. I mean, that's a bit greedy of him, <laughs> but he goes anyway. Mo Salah out on that right wing, pulls it back to Hendo, Fabinho. We are very, very narrow. And also... Like we uh, mentioned in the analysis, you need you need to have a good rest defense. Your defenders need to ensure that you have a decent rest defense. Now, they are playing with one striker. So technically, one of the center backs can mark tighter on the Kaku, whilst the other then can be the cover. But also, we got Robertson as well. He's not, he's not too eager to get in this position here, advance further forward. He actually holds and waits. So if we just rewind a little bit, Robertson from this part forward or this part on, he can just bomb forward. He's got all the space he can bomb forward, but we do also need to focus on having a decent rest rest defense basically a rest defense if we do lose the ball do we have bodies enough bodies to stop their counter attack effectively and i believe we are in a very very good position here but robertson ends up getting the ball whips it in into a nice area and plays it into salah so the next goal it looks like we are on the break with Firmino. he plays it to mane back to fabinho now gomez hendo we possibly don't lose the ball here. Oh, what a ball from Hendo there. Robbo, Jones, Robbo. Oh, that's poor defending from number 29. He's at Havertz, yeah. Absolute poor defending. Embarrassing there. So now for the fourth, what goal is this now? I'm, I'm losing count here. For the fifth or fourth goal, Van Dijk, Gomez, Trent. We lose the ball to Kante and we immediately win the ball back. Here's Gomez, Jones, for Mane, sorry. Van Dijk. Gomez, nice little patient build up here for Binho Gomez. Here we are keeping the ball short and he plays a lovely ball to Salah. And what a finish. Kind of a typical Liverpool goal there. So this highlight here starts with a Chelsea. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. referee, referee. I was going to say this one and started with a Chelsea corner, but it doesn't. Oh, referee. So we put it back just a little bit. Firmino, Salah breaking through. Here's Firmino. That's a poor pass. That there is a poor pass from Bobby. But here's Mendy. So Chelsea are in possession now. And we score very, very soon as well. So here's Shaloba, Kante, Jorginho, Kai Havertz. Robbo! Look how aggressive Robbo was there. Jones. lovely stuff here rubble hard and low like i said the low crosses were very very effective and there we go lastly was a goal from joe gemmers that, that looks like a, a set piece so we're not even going to watch that so though we scored no goals directly through um pressing there you can see the pressing was still effective from the little other clips that i did to show that's that for that well it depends how i edit this video because <laughs> i actually just recorded that highlight bit at the end but that that bit might actually go a little bit before the end welcome back to football manager and i just noticed that my camera wasn't even bang in the middle when i was reading that analysis so that's probably going to look a bit weird and i know i said i'm going to show you guys the results after i show you guys the tactic and i will do but you can kind of get a gist of how effective this gig and press is in football manager so yes we are liverpool and yes you are expected to do very well we all know that but again like we said in the analysis in able in order to perform an effective gig and press you need the players it's similar to ticket Tucker. and in football manager some people really believe just whacking up all the um the trigger press whacking up all the high lines that way you're just going to get a very effective gig and press well that is not the case that's not necessarily the case yes in football manager the higher the press then the more well the better the results you can get in football manager but that does not mean that you are performing an effective gig and press in football manager but also sometimes people are just making or creating space and holes in their tactic believing they are creating an effective gig and press or just an effective pressing system you don't want to leave gaps now it's okay beating sides like everton or 
<laughs> I don't want to disrespect any team, but it's okay beating certain sides or smashing certain sides 4 0, 5 0 in Football Manager. But then when you play against a Manchester City or you play against a Chelsea, some players really struggle because then that team starts to win 4 5 0. And then you come to realize that your tactics may work very, very well against smaller teams, but teams with some rep, but teams with higher quality can expose those gaps that are within your tactics. So with this tactic, we are trying to create an effective game press of course minimize those gaps because gagging press is a risky system as it is so we're trying to minimize that and as you can see here we are smashing teams like chelsea seven goals to nil so let's have a look at the tactic well you can also see that we scored we've got a goal difference of 130 and the points tally is on 108 but yes let's look at the tactic because like i said this video isn't purely based on just this tactic it's not a i don't know download this tactic video it's just me trying to analyze what Gagan Press is and how you can implement an effective one in Football Manager. So we do have two tactics. This is the one that I use basically throughout the whole system. And because I'm Liverpool, I didn't want to sit there play 38 games. Most of these games were actually played on instant result. But also we do have a 4-4-2 diamond. We also have a diamond tactic here. Now what you would notice is effectively the same tactic, but this is what Liverpool shape is normally. It's a 4-3-3, but in practice, a lot of the time it will go into a diamond with the two inside forwards coming inside and then you've got your false nine dropping deep this is what this tactic kind of focuses on um Jurgen Klopp's shape within possession apart from the full backs I believe that I needed to use wing backs or two wing backs instead of one just making sure we do have those wider areas covered so we do have two tactics and you can download both of those tactics as well. The link will be down in the description. So for the Jurgen Klopp, perfect Gegen press 4-3-3. Three, three. For the mentality, we are playing with the attacking mentality, focusing on getting players further forward, but also you become just a tad, just a tad bit more aggressive off the ball as well. The attacking width now, I've set this to fairly wide and I actually tried narrow, but what I've noticed is that it doesn't necessarily mean that your players are going to be positioned closer to each other. And likewise, playing with an attacking width on wide, it doesn't necessarily mean that your players are now positioned wider or noticeably wider from each other. All it is is that now you're focusing your passing into those wider areas. And Liverpool actually do create some wide overloads, some wide triangles in possession as well. So the attacking width is set to fairly wide or is set to wide for that purpose now with Liverpool I did leave it on wide I did also try this tactic out with a Chelsea and some other teams and I actually noticed with other teams it's more effective on fairly wide so it could be down to the quality of your players the better the players or the better quality you have you the more wider you go and the worse players that you have then the more narrow Possibly, I'm not sure. I did only stop at the very good team, so I tried it with the Liverpool, basically the top four. Basically, the top four. So now, for the approach play, we are using underlaps on the left and on the right as well. Now, this is a bid to get... Uh, players position closer to each other so once we do lose the ball for an example if my left winger is holding onto the ball waiting for the underlap if he loses the ball then we could have two or even three players around the ball in close proximity already because for one we're trying to create that underlap and for two we are playing with a wide attack and whip so we are focusing play for the wider areas naturally drawing players into those wider areas so that's one reason why I have underlap left and underlap right as well but also I do see Andrew Robertson making overlapping and underlapping runs which is what we kind of get from a wing back as he runs wide with the ball so if he's in possession or in possession even and he's running wide with the ball then naturally creating an overlap but if he's just making a forward run and let's say Mane on the left wing is holding on the ball then we are looking for that underlapping run and then you got Trent making that underlapping run on the right hand side as well we are going to be playing out from the back I don't necessarily believe Liverpool are very strict with this and in this game, you don't actually need to use it. But again, it's one of those things you do get better results using it for some odd reason. It is better that you are a better team and you're in possession for longer spells as well. So I guess that is why it was more effective playing out from the back with this tactic. The passing directness is set to show up because we want to play shorter passes and we also want players in close proximity and the tempo is set to higher. Nothing too aggressive or too extreme, but the tempo is set to higher and in the final third, sending in low crosses which proves to be very effective in 
possession, when possession or in transition, when possession has been lost, counter press, obviously. And when possession has been won, I might have said that twice, but just in case I didn't. <laughs> when possession has been won, we are going to be countering. When goalkeeper's in possession, he is going to distribute the ball quickly. Lastly, for out of possession, this is where things get a bit tasty. Defensive line is set to much higher, trying to replicate that Jurgen Klopp defensive line in real life. And it's very, very rare, very rare that I use a much higher line defensive line as well. A much higher line defensive line, a much higher defensive line. We are using the offside trap, of course. The defensive whip is set to standard. The chicken press, intriguingly, is set to more often rather than extremely often or much more often because, like in the analysis, we are trying to split the team into two blocks where we have the front three who are responsible of defending five, sometimes six players, and then you have your midfield and defenders closing out those middle parts of the pitch. So the trigger press is set to more often, and we are preventing the short goalkeeper distribution. Now, for well, I was gonna say actually for the next tactic, but we can look at that briefly next. Now for the player roles, I mean, we don't have to go through each one or we can. Super keeper on support, nothing is there. Ball playing defender, nothing. Central defender there, nothing as well. For the wing back on support, shoot less often, close down more. Mark tighter for the inverted wing back on attack he's going to be closing down more and marking tighter when i come across an important instruction then i will say for the ball winning midfielder or for the holding midfielder he's a ball winning midfielder on defend for the advanced playmaker he's going to be passing the shoot or roaming from his position and marking tighter for the box to box midfielder that jordan henderson role he's going to be running wide with the ball and staying wider now this is actually important in creating those wider overloads and those wider rotations as well as liverpool love to do now instead of using Mazala we are using the box to box midfielder the box to box midfielder being a great link from defense to um, attack as well but also just being that energizer bunny in midfield that Jordan Hendo is so he's going to be running wide with the ball and staying wider now for the inverted or inside forwards they're going to be sitting more narrow which is key again to the press and the gegen pressing or the counter pressing I should say once we are in possession if we do lose the ball narrowly then we do already have our wingers in those narrow positions ready to pounce and press the opposition in those moments of losing the ball they are also going to be closing down more as they're going to be working hard defending those five or six players and they're also going to be tackling harder and marking tighter Mo Salah is going to be shooting more often lastly we do have that full snide closing down more and tackling harder now for the diamond shaped tactic everything is practically the same but we are using wing backs on attack this time and they just have the same instructions as they did in the previous tactic and we are also using pressing forwards the one on the right is the more salah kind of guy who's going to be dribbling more but also shitting more often and on the left we just have that i don't know Mane, <laughs> where he's dribbling more and then you have your attacking midfielder just behind the two taking more risk dribbling more closing down more and tackling harder as well team instruction wise practically the same the attacking whip it's on fairly wide now we aren't using the underlaps we don't need to or we shouldn't do i should say because we do need that whip from the wing backs and yeah that is practically it oh the defensive line is now dropped to higher because this one isn't necessarily the jürgen klopp tactic it's just a gag and press diamond tactic it's just a gag and press diamond tactic and that there wraps up the tactic in football manager now 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 it's time to look at the results and then lastly we are going to be playing that game well it's a champions league final as well <laughs> So looking at the competitions in the English Premier Division, you can see that we won the league very, very comfortably. I mean, we won 35 out of the 38 games. We drawn three. Again, disclaimer, I did not play every single game. A lot of the games, I should say most of the, I probably played about eight if i'm gonna be really truthful with you guys i'll probably played about eight but then again this video i must stress isn't purely about the tactic it's not purely about the tactic it's me explaining or trying to analyze what gag press is and how you can implement a very effective one in football manager so yeah goal difference 130 and the points tally on 108 in the champions league of course we have to play that game in the fa cup we won that who did we beat in the final we beat west ham 1-0 in extra time and in the Carabao Cup we come as runners up 1-0 I mean this is 
practically like real life Liverpool, aren't they? It's practically like real life Liverpool. So now let's look at the team stats. Liverpool with 145 goals. Most shots for, but fewer shots against. It, that there shows me that my Gagan press was fairly effective. We did have the most clean sheets, 26. We beat Liverpool's count in real life. And for the fewest conceded, we only, only conceded 15 goals this season. And we also completed the most um, dribbles. But also impressively, for the average possession, we come in second with 55%. Looking at the player stats, you can see the most goals, most Salah, most assists is Trent, Robbo, Salah's there again. Most shots for Salah, most man of the match awards, Salah. <laughs> most key passes, the top three, Robbo, Trent and Salah as well. Most tackles won, nobody in the top eight. Most dribbles, um, Robertson's there. Clean sheets, Allison. Fuse conceded Allison. But there is something that I wanted to show you as well when it comes to the, um, the defending. Again, showing you guys how effective this is. Now, I've used a lot of tactics with Liverpool and also tactics tactics with like the pressing all the way up the, the um line of engagement all the way up but it wasn't really focused on keeping the ball getting players narrow and creating that effective gag and press so i didn't quite see the same results as this one so for the tackles one liverpool are 13th now that is actually quite high for a team like liverpool with the tackles one but with the tackles one ratio it is on 80 percent we were the most effective tacklers in the english premier league and when it comes to possession one as well we are fourth once again this is actually quite high for a team like liverpool where you can see someone like manchester city they're kind of placed mid table with this chelsea as well their ninth Man manchester united are in seventh place whereas we are in fourth place interceptions again quite high we are ranked quite high with six so this again is showing us that off the ball things are going very very well that is also backed by this little graph we just literally saw the numbers but you can see it by graph as well the tackles one ratio oh, just over 80 percent there just over 80 percent and you can see it tackles attempted just under 18 but someone like liverpool or sorry liverpool someone like chelsea uh, manchester city or even manchester united who actually attempted fewer tackles per game but the tackles one ratio percentage just wasn't as good as ours but enough of the results because again this video isn't based off that based about that well you can see the goals as well salah scoring 62 goals in all comps Mane in second place with 26 Firmino with 22 trent with 17 diaz with six i mean we scored a lot of goals we scored a lot of goals but but now it's time to play that Champions League final. Hopefully we can see some effective gag and pressing as well. But throughout this video, you may have seen me show a few clips from this season and how effective our gag and press was. So here we are. Oh, <laughs> I moved my camera to here and uh, now automatically I just go to there to look for the camera, but you guys are here. So here we are now for the game. Now, I'm not exactly sure which tactic to go with for this game. Well, I've only used this one. This tactic was actually created at Chelsea, so I'm um, funny enough. But yeah, this is the tactic that we are going to go with right here, right now. And you can see as well, this is actually kind of the first attempt at this. And we've got the overlap, pass into space, run at defense, all of that crappy stuff. <laughs> but we have tweaked it and now we have arrived at this final um, version. So this is the team that we're going to go with for the Champions League final. Hopefully we win. I've got my headphones on. So we mean business. Let's go. So we will watch this um, in 2D. Wow, my headphones are loud. So we will watch this in 2D. And then, of course, the highlights will be in 3D as well. Actually, no. We'll just watch it in 3D because a lot of you guys do like 3D. You guys do like 3D. Edison making a great save. Early. Oh, it's a clear-cut chance. We didn't even get shown the highlight. How bogus. Liverpool playing fairly decent, but we're not getting any highlights. <laughs> it's a tight game. Look, look how high we are compared to Manchester City. We are pressing them fairly fairly deep or forcing them deep i should say my right, head's been on the oh kevin the Bruyne. this is the quality of manchester city and harlan heads the ball into allison's hand yes we are using a live transfer update as well so they do have harlan throws it to virgil van dyke robo now this camera angle looks absolutely stunning, by the way. Robertson just <laughs> running wide on his own down that left flank. Plays it to Thiago. Robbo now. Thiago. Robbo. Thiago. Plays it to Fabinho. Robbo. Thiago. Mane. <laughs> Robbo. <laughs> this is Kev Robbo, the playmaker or something. Fabinho. Mane. Oh, what a goal. And what 
a goal. Robo the playmaker. I mean, bloody hell. How many touches did Robo have of the ball there? That was just insane. <laughs> that was insane. I mean, Robo deserves all the praise there. He, he done fairly well in keeping possession of the ball, but what a finish. What a finish from Mane. Just that one touch finish. One touch finish. There's Trent now. Hendo. Trent. Hendo. Fab. 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 Fabs. Gomez. Oh, okay. Force them out a little bit, boys. There's Virgil now. Big Van Dyke. Thiago. Lovely ball to Trent. That inverted. Oh, the wing back. Trent, you got the techers to bury that side. So it is half time. Um, Manchester City have had three shots and they've had three on target, but not necessarily anything threatening. We saw one of the um, highlights where it was just a soft header into the keeper's hand. We actually scored from that as well. So half time. Let's go and get it, boys. Has Sterling. Rodrigo Harlan. Find Sterling. Kyle Walker. This could be a goal. I just shouted in courage as well, literally at the exact same time. Uh oh. Good block. Falls to Concello. Oh, we could have won that there. Who was that? Salah could have nicked that there. The ball's falling to Sterling. De Bruyne, Rodrigo, Haaland. Jao Concello, Sterling. Oh, that's a lovely goal. Lovely, lovely goal. That is so annoying because I literally just. um sent a shout and as soon as i sent that shout they went and scored so if i send oh i'm not i'm never going to touch the shouts again trent whips it in far post trent whips it in far post again gomez are oh, off the line so now i'll tweak in game what you can do for the attack and whip we're just going to just knock it down we are going to knock it down because now the two teams are actually the quality of the two teams is very very close here is joe gomez henderson trent tiago now oh what a ball come on T Oh, what a goal. No referee. No, no, none of this, son. None of this, son. Please, none of this, son. Go awarded. Mo Salah, Salah. Trent, what a ball from Thiago. Though. That playmaker. Oh, what a ball. Oh, ball. And that's why Salah has scored goddamn nearly 70 goals. Jesus, pieces, lemon, squeeze us. Again, we make, we make a tactical uh, twitch. We can tactical switch and look, we're now fairly just dominate. Uh oh, it's Alison Becker. Got Gomez. Don't be doing flicks there, son. What are you doing? 83rd minute in the Champions League final. You're doing a flick inside. Oh my God, why is my team trying to do flicks inside the, get out of my face. Trying to do flicks and tricks inside their own box. Oh, it's extra time. I mean, I do feel that like we've been the better team. They've actually quite literally have two highlights and scored both. Quite literally. Let's feel Foden. We've got to press him there, son. We've got to press him there. Harlan, De Bruyne, Foden. Over the top to Gabriel Jesus. Has the beating of Trent. Trent's got to do better there. Poor defending from Trent. Here's Alisson Becker though. Kicks it long, which could be a mistake. Yes, it is. Oh my God. Oh my God. Three highlights, three goals. Edison kicks the ball long to Harlem, but we win the ball now or we pick up the recovery. Here's Hendo, Trent now running through to Mo Salah. Mo Salah to Trent. Whips it and there is the third. It's 3-3. What a Champions League final. This is turning out to be what a goal from Liverpool. Salah makes the goal and Mane gets his second of this final. <laughs> Absolute crazy game here. Absolute crazy game. I've made no subs as well, so my players out there are probably just knackered right now. And it looks like it's going to go to penalties. Oh, money just got injured. Oh, of course, this take. We need a good penalty taker on the pitch. Ah, oh, that wraps up the game. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make you guys sit through the penalties. So we're just gonna quickly sim this. I would say. Oh, we can't even sim it. 
To be fair, I don't even want to sit through the penalties. <laughs> it is penalties now. We can't actually see any of the gag and pressing whatsoever or anything like that. So we are going to just skip this and hopefully we win on penalties. Hopefully. Come on! What's <laughs> oh, we won on penalties! Of course we did! We won on penalties! Who missed the penalty for them? Folden. Ha! And we scored all of ours. So, unfortunately, that wraps up this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Hopefully, now you guys can implement an effective game on press in your tactic. I mean, of course, it doesn't mean you're going to win every single game. But... You could have a good chance of winning games, as you can see with this Liverpool team. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I'll see you guys soon. Stay safe. Peace out. That was a long one.